Welcome back to the channels Tapa Alho Azul and Super Academico. Let us keep the reading of my book Phenomena. Today we will read the chapter 12. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's go. Chapter 12. I still had nine days off from college, therefore, I organized my notes once more. I wasn't ready to return to the serious stuff yet, so saved it for later. Many things happened after I came back home and that had affected my concentration ability. I was under a lot of a stress, due to all the accumulated information, meditation and doubting in my head. I was still under the spell of that nightmare I had on my first night at home back from Germany. But I tried to relax. It was sitting out in the balcony. I didn't live in a fancy but I always found it very nice. There were good families living in small houses made of wood. They'd cover them with varnish in order to protect them from the cold, which during the fall would cover their roves with dry leaves. It is still like that up to this day and age. If I'd had children, I wouldn't any other place to bring them up. I looked at the street and saw some children there, but I think another generation would still have to be born in order for that to go back to be what it used to be when I was a kid. Many of the children who I played and eventually became my school friends were all gone. They got accepted at out-of-state universities, at least those I was more acquainted with. I missed having someone with whom I could talk about my childhood and remember some things I did. In spite of all tranquility and loneliness, I couldn't really have any peace of mind. Then I got saved by the bell. Good morning, Joe. It was Mr. Long, the mailman. He was standing there as friendly as the everyday usual, like always. He had witnessed my entire childhood, everybody's actually. Good morning, Mr. Long. How are you doing, sir? I'm Fine, Joe. What about your parents? Same old, same old. I see them now as often as I used to see them when I was a kid. He laughed out of happiness. I remember that you and your brother were such a handful. You caused a lot of trouble in this neighborhood. Yet you'd run back home as soon as your father called you guys back in. That's right. Dad never was an authoritarian figure, but he always imposed his authority. His looks like someone who has authority, Joe. Every time he'd invite over for thanksgivings and I'd decline, I'd feel as if I was disobeying his command, although he didn't mean that. Why did you always decline though? It is a family celebration. My wife and I only have one another, but we enjoy sticking together, and besides, why wouldn't you bring her along? Hopefully my parents won't ever hear me say this, but you met the two of them even before they had Donnie. You were like family to us. I think everyone around here considered you family. I know Joe. I feel the same regarding all of you. Maybe that's another reason why I always declined those invitations, other families also invited me every year. You could have accepted an invitation from a different family every year. After all, Thanksgiving is the day all Americans gather around the table and give thanks for the harvest, he thought for one second, made a frown, and said. We will see Joe. And how is your sister doing? Oh, why don't you sit down for a minute? Your bag seems too heavy. He thanked me and then sat on the end of the bench. She is getting married. Her wedding will be in June. Good. I hope she is happy. I think that only depends on her fiancé's patience, Wayne. Mr. Long smiled through the corner of his mouth and. Come on, Joe. Your sister is a great girl. She has always been. I remember one day when you were about seven years old. You, Donnie and that boy from House 93. Fred. Fred Wilson. I think so. You pushed her off that tire swing he had at home till she fell in the mud. I had to stop her from hurting you guys. She pulled your hair so hard that it seemed as if your heads would split up from your necks. I remember that. Donnie was stronger than her and managed to run away. God. I don't know who was crueler, us or her, we laughed a lot at that story. Fred's mother gave him a major spanking, poor guy. His head was already pounding because and had pulled his hair. Mr. Long brought us home and was all muddy and I was crying. I also had mud all over my and a pounding headache. I think mom never told dad about that. He'd certainly have grounded us. Although I think I'd prefer to have been grounded than to feel that pain for days. Every time I combed my hair I'd unavoidably have tears rolling down my face. You were terrible. I miss those times when you were all kids. I delivered the mail to your parents, I but loved to see those streets full of children. A lot of times I'd deliver college acceptance letters. Each one of them was from a farther state. It felt as though as if I was losing a son, 
perhaps because I never had one. We are all your children. No doubt about that, he looked at the street feeling a little melancholic. He was such a simple man. He looked at everything in a very simple way. He'd not analyze anything. He was a natural man. He was so ordinary that. Everybody admired him. He was the mail carrier that spent his whole life delivering our mail, bringing us good and bad news. It doesn't matter. The truth is that he actively participated in our lives. Mr. Long retired two years later and, unfortunately, died shortly after that at age 65. It was the only time I saw his wife in his funeral. Her name was Martha Long and she was very sad. Fortunately, he had been to one Thanksgiving dinner at our house at least. He did didn't bring her along though. He showed up very early, had a bite to eat, and then took off. I guess he went straight back home to spend time with her. But we enjoyed having him over even for a little while. Well, Joe, I will be getting going now. I still have things to do. I understand. I'm sorry for having bothered you. Not at all. It is always good to remember the good old times. You will appreciate that more when you get older. Give my regards to your family. Oh, and here it is your mail. I almost forgot to give it to you. He was already standing and getting ready to go when. Thank you. I also enjoyed remembering the good old times, Mr. Long. See you later, Joe, and he walked away. He had no idea the good that conversation had done to me. I felt lighter afterwards. My whole body felt very light. I don't recall the last time I'd felt that way before. And that was what I was missing, someone with a simple and pure way of looking at the world, so we could remember the good things we went through in life. I think the anguish I felt was similar to the one felt by the unhappy spirits. I only needed somebody to share the happiness of being alive with. After that day I felt much safer to move on, go back to college, finish writing my book, and continue to learn about paranormal phenomena. Through the very end. But without forgetting that life is also a simple thing that needs to be appreciated and lived to its fullest extent. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Bye.